So here we have a diagram with a triangle and a line PS drawn in it. And we're told various pieces of information about vectors. We're asked to express PQ in terms of I, J and K. So let's have a closer look at what they're telling us. From P to R, 9i plus 5j plus 2k. Let's write that in column form. 9, 5, 2. And let's look at the next piece of information. That's from R to Q. 12i minus 9j plus 3k. In column form, that would be, sorry, it's negative 12. That would be negative 12, negative 9, 3. And we're asked to express from pre to q in terms of i, j and k. So instead of going straight from p to q, we're going to go the scenic route via r. So we go from p to r, followed by from r to q. And let's find that in terms of these column vectors, we know that PR is 9, 5, 2. RQ is 12, negative 9, 3. Negative 12, negative 9, 3. So adding these up, we just add the Corresponding x components, 9 plus negative 12 is negative 3. Corresponding y components, 5 plus negative 9 is negative 4. Corresponding z components, 2 plus 3 is 5. Now it's asking us to write that in terms of i, j and k. So it's minus 3i, minus 4j, plus 3i, K. So that's part A. Let's have a look at part B. Show that P to S, this journey here from P to S, is equal to this. OK, well, let's try the same method as we tried before. Let's go the scenic route and we'll try from P to R because we do know something about from P to R. And then let's go from R to S. And what do we know about from R to S? Well, we're told in this question that the point S divides Q to R. That's starting here, Q to R, in the ratio one part to two parts. So that's one bit, if you like, and that is two bits. So this journey that we've gone from R to S will actually be two thirds of the whole journey from R to Q. And now we know all the components of the parts of this journey from P to R is 9, 5, 2. Two thirds of journey from R to Q we know is minus 12, minus 9, 3. Negative 12, negative 9, 3. So let's work out uh, the two thirds part of this before we add them. So one third of negative 12 would be negative 4, doubled would be negative 8. One third of negative 9 is negative 3, doubled is negative 6. One third of 3 is 1, doubled is 2. And doing the corresponding components addition here, we get 9 plus negative 8 is 1, 5 plus negative 6 is negative 1, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So there's the components of 
the vector PS, the vector it represents, is represented by PS. Um, and that equals 1i minus j plus 4k. So that's part B finished. Let's have a look at part C. Hence, find the size of angle QPS. So for this final part, let's just draw a little sketch of that. PQS. And let's call that angle theta. What do we know about PQ? We know that that's negative 3, negative 4, 5. What do we know about PS? We know that's 1, negative 1, 4. And we'll use the formula cos theta equals the dot product of these two. Let's call this uh, V and let's call this W v dot w divided by the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w. Now, v dot w, since we know these components, negative 3, negative 4, 5, dot 1, negative 1, 4, we can work that out. And it's multiply the corresponding components and add the three results. So on the top of the fraction we'll have negative 3 times 1 plus negative 4 times negative 1 plus 5 times 4. In the bottom of the fraction we have to have the magnitude of the vector negative 3, negative 4, 5 times the magnitude of the vector 1, negative 1, 4. Now, magnitudes, easy to get hold of. It's the square root of each of these components squared. So it'd be negative 3 squared, that's the same as positive 3 squared, negative 4 squared, and 5 squared. I'm missing out the negatives there, because you square a negative 3, it's the same as squaring positive 3. And likewise, 1 squared, 1 squared, 4 squared. So, we're making progress. Top line then, negative 3 plus 4 plus 20 over square root of 9 plus 16 is 25 plus 25 is 50. 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, that's 2 so far, plus 16, that's 18. So we finally get a value of the cosine of this angle between these two uh, vectors. This is 21. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1 plus 20 is 21. 21 divided by the square root of 50 times the square root of 18. So, at this stage, we need to resort to our calculator. Make sure you know what the answer is going to be. And it's going to be in degrees if deg is up on the screen. Um, if you wanted it in radians, rad would have to be up on the screen. I don't think there's any... There's no description of what the angles to be measured in, so we'll use degrees. The cosine of the angle is this expression. So what angle, on your calculator it's probably cos to the minus 1 or second function cosine, what angle has a cosine that is this thing? So it's 21 divided by, now it's the whole of, so we'll put that in brackets, the square root of 50. times the square root of 18. And then close my brackets, and then close the final brackets. It's a 
slightly confusing with all these brackets. What do we get? 45.572 and so on. So that implies that theta is equal to 45.572, etc. Degrees. So theta is approximately 45.6 degrees. And that's to three significant figures. Or one decimal place, whatever you prefer. So 45.6 degrees is the required angle between PQ and PS.